peaceful people struggling in the struggle. We I mean, don't look for trouble, just ask around. But when outside places, from foreign places, talk about taking over, we embarking down. unique style of music, Dave Martins told many stories. From describing boyhood days to asserting not a blade of grass, he composed lyrical masterpieces, many of which narrated what it means to be a Guyanese. So how did he piece his hits together? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Dave Martins. I am a West Coast country boy, born and raised at Hague and later at Vreenhoop. I am 87. I know you, you have a very popular song called Boyhood Days and yeah. you know they said you said time cannot erase so I must bring you back to this um, very important question here. What what were your boyhood days like? My boyhood days was actually a lot like most boys. Um, um, looking for birds, chewing gum, um, sapodilla gum from the tree to tra trap birds. Board, board traps, um, um, scouting the yard looking for guavas, fruit trees, and I was living close to the seawall. We, we, we lived in here. The, the seawall was in the backyard, so I'd be on the beach or not, not in the water too much. The water it was kind of getting muddy. My father was away a lot because he had a farm in the Pomeroon, which took took his time full time. I would go down and spend some time with them, especially all it is. Um, but so it was mostly my mother and myself and my, and my sisters. I have four, no brothers, I have four, four sisters. And you are the second youngest? Huh? And you are the second youngest? No, no, I am the, I'm the third child. Yeah, three sisters before me, me and then one sister after me. Where I lived, there was very few guys my age in that, in that area, so I had no, no boyhood friends, to, so, so to speak. And so when I moved to, we moved to Freedom Hoop, when I started going to Saints, and I moved to Freedom Hoop because it was more convenient, and I became friends with the Henry brothers, some Douglas people that lived down the road from us. We were friends up to now. Um, Became, we became pals. So when I started the band, uh, you know, two of them were in the band. That was the band before, before Trade Winds. It was, a, it was a long, gradual process for me, music. It didn't happen overnight. listening to the music in the house or the music listening to me one or the other. <laughs> a lot, lot of uh, old 78s, but radio, a lot of it was radio. Um, that, that ignited my interest in the music and the, and the radio stations as now played a variety of music. So from that music I was listening to it, mostly at Green Hoop, some, some of it at Hague, but more at Green Hoop days. I was listening to all kind of music. Jazz, rock and roll, classical, a lot of classical. I became interested in classical music because I was drawn by the, by the uh, long, long structures, classical pieces that go on. One piece will go on for 15 minutes, you know. And I, I was drawn to that. I, I don't know why, I just was, you know. And, um, I think so, so a lot of that, that interest when I started to write, I, I was going in that direction. I was going towards more 
descriptive work rather than a lot of popular music is instantaneous work, you know, about bang, bang, bang. But the, the wider music, the classical music, is more, is more extended. It goes over long periods. And that, that it always interested me. It's not always the most commercial music, but it interested me from young. I found Toronto a very excited place. I mean, I was exposed to stuff I never dreamed of in my life living in Guyana. This is a big city, metropolitan city. Sort myself out. And I sorted myself out and uh, started playing music and started a little band, like I said. I named it the Latins. That was a, a kind of a, a business move because I knew from living in Guyana that Latin music, unlike now, Latin music was very popular in Guyana at that, at that point. And then you changed the name to the Debonairs and then eventually the Trade Winds. Yeah. So how did you get from that point to that point? How did we get from the Latins to the Trade Winds? There were two things at play. I wanted a, a commercial entity, but I had to be realistic in that the commercial entity in Toronto was, was, not, was not Caribbean music at all. Some of the stations would play a little bit of it, but the big, Car the big Caribbean movement to the city, uh, in New York, Toronto, Los Angeles, Miami, all those places had not begun. So there was no big demand for Caribbean music, so it would be kind of crazy to start a band or go up there with a band playing Caribbean music. So I had to come up with a name that suggested what the music was, but not too strongly. So I, I use the word trade winds because it, it, trade winds blew all over the place. So it could be, it, it covered everything. We sat down in the pouring rain, in the hot sun and the sugar cane, and we planted the rice and cane. Why ho? Yes, we take off the boots and we put on the roots. Why oh? So remember the crabwood that grow in a sequibo is we own. And the six and grout pea and the sake winky is we own. And the lava that run from the progression was very simple. The progression was that that we had the, we had the, we had the product. We had to get it to the market. I mean, to get it to the market, I, I, uh, the, with, the, with the full trade winds band that was recording, uh, I realized we needed a place, we needed a, a home, a base. So I kept looking around and I finally found a place right downtown in Toronto that was, that was uh, what was it before? I'm not sure what it was before. It may have been a, a, a music place before, but I'm not sure about that. <coughs> but it was ready-made. It was a downtown club right near the subway, easy for people to come to. Good accommodation, not enormous, all about maybe 200 people, I guess. But it was perfect for us. So we started playing there six nights a week, full-time, full full-time music. And um, so by the time we got, I got the recording and started thinking about recording, because I, I saw the progression, I needed to get product out, I needed to get recordings. You can't stay in this little place downtown. You gotta get on the radio. To get on the radio, you gotta have recordings. So um, by the time I got to that, we had, uh, we had become a force because the, the, s the songs that become popular almost right away. The market was sitting waiting for it. You know, honeymoon in couple was an overnight, like, like two, three weeks from zero to, to number 12 or whatever it was on the, on the chart. So it happened very quickly. Honeymoon in couple was in a bedroom, packing up to go away in the middle of June. We st I started out with an interest in country music before I got 
to Kaisu, um, mainly because that's what my parents played in the house. They had a collection of country music records, and the station played a lot of country music. The station, the station didn't play much soca at all, much, well, Calypso period, you know. Played occasionally, unlike Trinidad, where really. I, my, when, I, when I went to, 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 to live in Trinidad afterwards, as, as the band, when the band formed, that's when I got exposed to a lot of, a lot of vintage Trinidad music, and I became interested in that as well. In the process of, of going to Trinidad, and in my, 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 where my uncle was living, and being exposed to Trinidad music, I had fallen in love with Calypso. The, 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 the stories, not, not the double entendre so much, but, but, but you have to deal with the double entendre, that's part of the music. But this, this, the, the narrative form, which is the music, as opposed to the other stuff, which is just love songs, darling, I love you, you know, meet me in the street and all that. Uh, very, very narrow subject, You're exhausted fairly soon, as I did. So. so this other subject, you could sing about anything. You could sing about a, a honeymoon in couple, which is a joke. You could, you could sing about uh, um, a political decision. Uh, um, Made, made in the in the government, you could you could you, you could sing about anything, but that and that 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 grabbed me right away. I, I could see why the Calypsonian um, became so popular because they were they were able to reach all kind of people, the different 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 Calypsonians with different styles, but all taking the same ap ap approach to. Um, some of it sexual, but, but some of it just comedy, you know. Even though you left Guyana, it would seem as though your heart never did because it is reflected in much of your music. Um, your love for your country is reflected in much of your right. music. You know, we have the very famous um, Not a Blade of Grass, which you wrote in one hour in a hotel room, um, is we own a long time ago in Guyana. We have Hoopa and Tranjapal, one of my personal favorites. Um, we have songs like Boyhood Days, so you kept that aspect of you in your music. Um, it's a thing that you ask me that because that has never been pointed out to me. Nobody ever has been pointed out to me before. How come that happened? Um, I don't really know the answer. Uh, I just, it's just that I think it was such a contrast. Don't forget, I was listening to mostly country music, American country music prior to that, which has none of that. It doesn't, it doesn't have the, the, the African rhythm. It doesn't have the humor, some of it, but not much. It doesn't have the sexual stuff. It doesn't have the narrative, the storytelling. That all that, that those are the things about the music that caught me. And I, some of these guys, the Pretender and Blakey and Sparrow and Kitchen and those things the inventiveness, you know, in the music. So I, I was committed to, I mean, uh, on a business decision point of view, it was not the greatest idea because there was no huge, there was a market here for it, for it but it's small compared to the other stuff. So I was, I was going towards the smaller one. Why? I don't know, I just, it just, I just saw so much more range there. And, and I loved, particularly, I loved the, the, the actual sound of the, of the drums in, in Calypso, the actual rhythm. Is, I found it very enticing, make you want to get up and dance. <laughs> Not one rice grain, not one for us, not 
But what led you to write Not a Blade of Grass? How did you come up with these lyrics? What, um, I think it was the Venezuela Guyana yeah. controversy. Um, so, uh, how did you come about to say, okay, let me let me write this this piece of music? Yeah, it's, it's a very probing question. But the fact of, the fact of the matter is that that it is a, is a kind of a mysterious process. I, I, I don't even I don't even know myself why that, that particular song. You have you have to have to be a good songwriter, I put it this way. To be a good songwriter, you have to have an interest in a lot of things. You have you have to you have to see a song in a lot of things that, that most people will pass over and pay no attention to. Honeymooning couple is a joke. Some, my my brother-in-law told me this joke. I was living in Atkinson Field. My sister in the house, and he told me this joke. Honeymooning couple, and I and I, I didn't tell you nothing, but I said to myself, "Why well, does a song? Okay. Yeah, that does a really made song." Uh, so it's it's the same thing with 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 uh, with the music generally. You you you. It's part of what the songwriter is. The songwriter is a, is a guy who is, who is dissecting, he's opening up and looking at stuff and considering it from various angles. He's a prober, you're probing, you know. And, um, and, and sometimes you, you probe and you think, boy, this is, this is, this, this is it, this is, a, this is a hit. And it turns out that not. Or sometimes you're probing and you say, ah, this is no more. That's the hit. You know? <laughs> it's a mysterious process. I call it creative work. It's mis mysterious. Your music is much like storytelling. You, you through your music, you tell stories. And um, what influenced you to produce this type of music? That's a good question. I don't know what the influence was, but it was there big time. I, I, I became, I think one of the, one of the biggest um, surges for me came when my sisters, who were, who were the elders in the family, I was the second youngest in the family, uh, when my sisters, uh, who were 18, 19, 20 years old, I had an uncle living in Trinidad, and they went to Trinidad and came back from Trinidad Carnival crazy about Calypso music and with a lot of current records and so on. And that triggered it in me. So I started, um, I started paying a lot of attention to, to that music. It, it caught me. I'm, I, I, I don't know why. It just caught me. It was, it was rhythmic. It was, uh, it was real. It was actual, like most very good music, real stories, real incidents and a lot of the music had become very popular. So you would hear it on the radio as well, you know. That was, that was the surge for me. Do you have any advice for young Guyanese now who are trying to break into the music industry? Do you have any advice generally for them? The creative person, whether he's a painter or a musician or a novelist or a composer, whatever it was, He's a, he's a different head, he's a different soul. He has, he's, he's seeing stuff and being caught by stuff that other people don't even notice. So it's hard to say, why, hard to say how, how it actually works. I don't know how it actually works myself. I mean, play the grass for, as a good example. Um, Venezuela had invaded and obviously there was, you know, that, there was a story there, right? But, how do you, how do you, how do you present it? What do you, what do you take and say? Okay, this is the song. In, in that instance, I, I took, I took it down to the very level. I said, listen, we, we even want you to take a, a piece of grass out the ground. That means nothing. We don't even want you to take that. You know, so it, it, it reduces, it, it reduces things to the essentials. I think or the trivial almost. The only thing that I would, I would want to share is that for, for creative people, 
whatever field it is, whether it's music, whether it's dance, whether it's literature, whether it's painting, whatever it is, um, you have to you have to find. First of all, you have to you have to expose yourself to what has gone before, because some of the things that you that have gone before will give you ideas. That you know, Right, I never think oh, that, that could be a song in truth. You know? So part of it is is you have to involve yourself in the genre. You have to you have to get involved in it. You have to you have to, you have to want to do that. that. And that is something that is that is that is often missing because you can't force it. You know, it just comes on certain people. Certain people are attracted by it and, and say, "Boy, I like the." Most other people, the vast majority, just say, oh, okay, I'm gone. Yeah. But it's once, once you become interested in it, once you see, once you see how uh, Sparrow take a song about um, whatever, whatever those subjects are, the range of subjects that you guys write about, it opens your mind to the fact that you can you can find a song about anything. Don't 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 limit yourself, you know. And once you take your because nobody will say it the way you say it, or nobody will see it the way you see it. So it, it'll become original. So you you, you, you you may take somebody else's idea and and make an original piece out of it. You know? There are peaceful people struggling. Trouble. We don't look for trouble, just ask around. But when outside places, from foreign places, talk about taking over. 